I want to add that when we get to um, talking about committees, I'm going to make a report on an exchange I've had with uh, the Historic Preservation District and with the Energy Committee. I have some things to report on both those things. I'd also like to add just a quick, there's a grant thing. Barbara had sent an email from the Central Vermont Waste Management um, folks that we can apply to possibly get like a tire amnesty program, something to partner up with like Green Day to get garbage off our roads. You mean they'll take our tires for free? No, but we could apply for a grant to get funding so that so I have dreams of getting people to bring them to us and not throw them over the hills and okay. get folks go down. And so shall I add that to the end of the year? Yeah, just approval to go ahead and apply for it. So some ways we need to do that at the end of April. Okay. All right, remind me if I used to see that on the I was wondering, personnel-wise, we're going to want a executive session around the hiring discussion. Oh, we should have thought of that. It occurred to me. Didn't think of that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What are we talking about? A hiring Ogden. Whether we should go into executive session oh. to yeah. talk about. Yeah. If, there, if there's substantive discussion, I think, well, we, can do yeah, I think we, can. we should. Yeah. Okay. So delay that one until the end or something. I, yeah. Well, we always do executive sessions at the, at the end. end so that yeah. everybody else can go. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Minutes of March twenty fifth. Somebody like to move those? Any changes? Uh, I'd make a motion to approve. Oh, is somebody taking minutes? We, we don't have rows here yet. I guess I need to. <laughs> hold on, hold on. You want me to do it while you eat? I can do that. Can you, can you do it in Zoom yep. too? Are you yep. okay with that? I'm okay with it. So okay, Jordan you. and- Jordan Reed. moved. Do we have a second? I'll second. And seconded, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, minutes of the town meeting. Any changes to that? I thought Rose did a great job. Yeah. No, they did great. Okay, would somebody like to move them? So moved. We have a second. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Th oh, thank you, Donnie. Sorry, <laughs> I forgot to ask about you. Did you uh, vote for the uh, other minutes too? Yes, I did. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, uh, board Excuse orders. Excuse me, can I interrupt? You guys actually need to sign the town meeting minutes. Okay. Um, there's a signature okay, page at the end. Thank you. Um, board orders. Any questions on the board orders? If they're not, just to clarify, if it's a hybrid meeting, then if it's not unanimous, then it's roll call. Is that the rule? Yes, that's the rule. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Questions on board orders? I would like to ask about the attorney fees. Kari, okay. you you uh, we had a very high attorney bill again, and it's broke. I I asked, and you gave me the broken out version. I give you a page of it. Uh, there's a page of it. Did all of you get that? You'll, you'll see that it, there's a lot of emails to people that I don't recognize. Who are those people and why are they paying for their <laughs> discussions with our attorneys? So who there, is S. Spencer? Who is M. So that, Sarah Spencer. Sarah Spencer is the uh, veterinarian. Um, and, uh, and they work with our attorney? Well, she she's, does. On she needs to weigh in on the conditions of animals that are currently in uh, possession or uh, guardianship, I guess, of the, of the town. So, um, so yeah, that, that was wholly appropriate. So I, I took a pretty close look at that and too. True. And given the, given the dates, okay. um, those are all pretty relative to a period of dialogue because okay. they were all, they were that was regarding M. Kennedy, John Ray there? That was regarding um, threats the person was making towards I people see. involved. Okay, who, so who initiated the contact, I guess, was my question. Right. Yeah. Is, I mean, John, is John making a call or is, or is. He had initiated to make aware that threats had been made against the attorney. So we need to increase his safety. This is when she made threats against the attorney and John alerted him yes. to it. I yeah. see. And okay. 
All right. And I just wanted to be sure nobody was um, in, just helping themselves to well, our attorney. So I think, that, I mean, I think it, it, it's worth re reinforcing the, uh, the, the preference of the town, not preference, but the requirement to, to make sure that any communication with the lawyer is, is approved, you know, yeah. by the select board. But okay. given, given having taken a closer look at the list of individuals on there, um, it, it wasn't a, a, a long list of other people who seem to be having additional conversations mm -hmm. independently. Um, they are right. fairly yeah. relatively associated with, uh, yeah. uh, with a line of dialogue. Uh, and I think that was also around the same time that I had mentioned like, that we need all the conversations to be going through the select board as well. So unless there had been any later than, um, than, than those dates, certainly I'd keep, keep an eye on it, but. Okay, good. And, I, and I'll reiterate that. Those, yeah, those You're gonna tell yeah. Joe, yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay, thanks. Anything else on the, um, the board orders? If not, I'll take a motion to approve them. Um, it's been moved. So moved. Second. Okay, been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, Vtrans grant in aid program. This is, um, you'll remember that every year we have to apply for funds for the um, parts of roads that are hydrologically connected to surface waters. Mm -hmm. We don't have to, but if we do, we get money. And if we sign this letter, we become eligible for $17,000 for this year, of which we have to um, match 20% or $4,250. Um, but we can do that in kind. We get to count the road crew time, the, the equipment and so on, so it's not a problem. To, and they, the funds have to go towards uh, working on these roads. Does everybody understand what this is? Any questions? Yeah. All right, now I'll take a motion to, who has to sign this, Kari? Duly authorized representatives. The agenda says you. Oh, I right. interpreted that as well. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, will somebody please move to authorize me to sign the uh, Municipal Roads Grant and Aid so Program moved. letter? I'll second it. Jamie's moved and a second. All in favor? Okay. Aye. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kari, Ogden Hershey. So I'm making the recommendation that we rehire Ogden uh, on a part-time basis. He's uh, offering to work with us two, two days per week through the summer season and um, would like to come back full-time during plow season. He does not have a CDL currently, but we would be able to have him train um, while he's with us using the local roads, um, it's actually a federal program for learning the CDL, um, the information part, and then um, our crew could, could drive with him, sort of like a learner's permit situation, so he could get his hours in the truck um, and get his CDL at a, a pretty minimal cost. Um, Kari, I noticed yeah. you said he would be a class class A restricted. What does that mean? Can he drive a, a standard shift, or will it be only on yeah st standard shift? Yeah, and and pull a tractor. If I got that right, or trailer. If I got that right, no, no, no. If no. he takes he takes his test on a class A dump truck with a automatic he is restricted to only driving an automatic can he so, take can he take it on a standard yeah. also he can take it on a standard if he goes if he takes it on a standard he will not have that restriction on his license okay but he would be going for the lower level i'm assuming a b i know tyler that's how i got his was through writing he, he's willing to pursue an a to pursue an a okay I think it's more beneficial if he did his A. Yeah, you need another one. Relative to the size of our trucks, I think you would have to be, right? Well, I think that the problem you have right now is you have, there's one row crew member that has this A license who happens to be the foreman. So he's gonna be the one in the truck moving the estimator around all the time. Mm. Okay. 
nobody else can move a piece of equipment on a trailer if they don't have a class A. You can pull around an empty trailer all day with a class B, but the second you put it on, it gets no longer compliant. Isn't Tyler? Tyler doesn't have a class A? No. Are you going to get one? No. Oh, all right. Well, that's another. I don't want. Yeah. So, um, what should we do? Shall we save the discussion for executive session later? If that's what you want to do. I think. Yeah. I think we should. Okay. So we'll put that at the. We'll just do that at the end of the meeting, so we don't kick everybody out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Um, and one more item, uh, administrative item, is the authorizing the sales order for the new grader. You remember yeah. we got a bond for, uh, we were authorized to float a bond for up to 335000 and this is going to cost uh, 329000 <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. got three bids that came in um, um, below the three hundred and thirty, dollars and um, this is in stock, but they're willing to hold it for us until August when the bond money will become available to us. Remember the bond bank operates in two cycles. Um, and I just mentioned that, you know, since we started doing this research, we've taken an interest in getting a roller to pull behind the grader so that it would compact that after the grader. Uh, we're not gonna be able to afford that now, um, but it is compatible with doing it. Perhaps we'll be able to find the money through a grant or some other means by August when we actually make this purchase. And, and this was this was the consensus decision. People wanted the, the cat over the other options. Consensus among the road crew. Yeah. Now were we able to all two of them. Yeah. <laughs> two and a half. Yeah, two and a half. Were we able to uh, hold it or they're they're holding it for us, yeah. If if we no don't have it. the funds for the roller when we buy the grader, is that something we could add next year if yeah. it was in the yeah. budget? Yeah. Okay, do we need a motion then to, yes, we need a motion to authorize, who just signed that? Um, okay. I, uh, I did just sign it, I think. Yeah. Okay, a motion to authorize Kari to sign the sales order. So moved. Okay, well, I'll oh. second. We don't all need it, we do it. Okay, <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt again. I missed my opportunity earlier. Um, under uh, adding things, um, a couple of weeks ago at your last meeting, you re-adopted the rules of procedure. Congratulations. But we needed that signed as well. So we had a signing, sh a, a blank signature sheet oh, for you guys to just sign card. everything so we could get them in the town office. Thank you. Well, that's coming Thank around. You. Okay, I would like to introduce the select board now. In fact, everybody in the room to Buffy. Buffy, your last name, I keep wanting you to say Langlois, and you already told me it's Langlois. 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 For now, yes, that's all you got to do. <laughs> um, Buffy has applied to be our animal control officer. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you enjoy it. <laughs> Um, Buffy and we had a really nice conversation and we um, would like you all to meet Buffy now and then we'll decide whether or not we're going to appoint her. Buffy would you like to just say hi? You can come up or sit there whatever you're comfortable with. Hi everybody and, but I don't know you. <laughs> oh I'm sorry. Why don't we all say our names just so you know. I'm Jamie Morby. You, you know that two hands. Yes. Jordan Keys. Hi. And you know Carl. Ah. And, yes. and the owl here is Donnie Mucciarino. He's zooming in. Okay. Sorry. Nice to meet you guys. Okay. Oh, thank you. Um, okay. Why don't you tell us, you know, how long have you lived in Calais and what's your background with working with animals? I think I've been here for about four years. Uh, we, met, we bought the old Clish place. Um, I have two horses. Um, I grew up on a dairy farm. Um, I've always been oriented with dogs, um, not huge into cats, but I can tolerate them. <laughs> um, <laughs> horses, cat owls, sheep, goats, I don't like reptiles, that's about it. <laughs> um, Te well, tell everybody about the wild mustangs. <laughs> um, so, um, when I was growing up, I wanted a wild mustang. Um, and I have now adopted 
adopted a bunch of them. You get them out of the wild. Basically, they're, they've never been touched. They've never been handled. Um, you hold them in a facility, which is usually 20 by 20 with a 10 by 10 shelter attached to it. You definitely want it sturdy. Um, and you basically teach them that humans are okay. And then you go from there to whatever you're going to work with them for. Um, I definitely, that is a breed I definitely fell in love with, even though it's not really a breed. Um, it's part of our heritage, basically. How many of you gentled now? Um, my first one, I was 12. Um, so I couldn't actually claim that one. Because <laughs> um, you had to be 18. Um, I want to say I... I'm going to go with five, um, and I had my share of all kinds of breeds, but by far they're very versatile. Um, they're not overly tall, they're not, they're not huge, but they're awesome. And they don't have the domestic hangups. They've never, you know, they've never dealt with humans, so mm. it's your job to teach them that carrots are okay, and apples are okay, you know. And you don't really care about grain, they eat it, but you have to teach them what it is. So, those have always been my favorites. Mm. Any questions? Yeah. <laughs> um... Well, cool. thanks for the interest. Uh, I've heard a little bit of, of the conversations that you um, that you've had uh, with Ken, I believe. And um, do you, so, do you do you do your own transportation of, of your own animals? Uh, do you... Yeah, I have a three quarter ton and a two horse trailer. Okay, <laughs> sure. I know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I actually have a book with two trucks. <laughs> uh, yeah, great. Um, I don't, I don't know where, whether or not we have a, a, a policy on, on the books for how that happens, uh, but it certainly helps, I think, the town um, yeah. if, if individuals who are in the role um, are, are comfortable transporting uh, their own or, or at least know how to transport or port them if they need to and uh, make arrangements for it. But Correct. Yeah, thank you. That's, yeah. Other questions from Buffy? Um, Buffy, I sent you a contact, Trevor Whipple at the BLCT. He's a former, I think, Winooski chief of police. And he's now um, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns um, consultant on all things enforcement. And he's taught animal control um, classes, but there are none going now, and none in the foreseeable future. I tried several different ways to find training, and uh, when I contacted Trevor, he said he'd work with Buffy, he'd be her mentor, he'd, he'd be available to her, and I sent you the contact yes. information, yep. and Barbara um, will get you signed up um, if, if we're going to have to vote on it, of course. Right. Um, I was planning to vote on it later. Do you want to, you guys want well, I got one more question. Um, so we've recently uh, adopted... Um, Microsoft Office 365 mm -hmm. uh, platform, so basically Outlook. Um, would you be comfortable running that from your phone? Because uh, the position comes with an yeah. email address that's, that would yeah. be assigned. Yeah. We, we talked about okay, that. Okay, good. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. That, that's okay. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. Buffy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Buffy says at some point she might also be interested in being constable. Correct me if I'm wrong, but right now, no. She wants to learn this job. And I do work a full time job at the Boston Fire Group. Okay. All right. Thanks, Bonnie. Thank you. We'll get to the to the vote later. Um, this is officially the public comment period. Does anybody have a comment about something not on the agenda? Okay. Yeah, oh, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> so I sent you a, um, the notice that the East Montpelier Fire Department quarterly meeting is this Thursday. Yeah. I've requested the meeting materials, so I can forward them to you. I haven't gotten them yet, but I need to know how many might be going, and do we, I need to warn this as a select board meeting on Thursday? This is the joint meeting between the East Montpelier Fire Department and the East Montpelier Select Board and the Callis Select Board. 
Um, Are we going? I, I can go. That's this Thursday? This Thursday, the 11th. I'll be in Quebec. All right. Donnie, did you catch that? Yeah, I won't be able to make Thursday. Okay. So only two of us. Well, we'll Jamie's time. still checking her calendar. What time is it? Seven. seven. I, I believe it would that seven. be seven, yeah. I will try, but it's almost. So it sounds like for me I need to do Thursday morning. night meeting. Sounds, sounds like maybe, yeah. Just okay. okay. I mean, it's no big deal, right? It's no big deal. I just it's a sentence. Went, and okay. And I will follow up. I emailed Chief Petrelli yesterday or Saturday asking for the materials because I remember back in December or January, you guys never got the materials and that didn't go so well. So I'm doing my best to try to get them for you. Yeah, appreciate okay. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. All right. Any other public comments? Hello, the clips. Yes. <laughs> yeah, sure was. it was. Um, all right, the next item is the road standards, a certificate of compliance. Every year we have to sign a certificate of compliance that states we certify that uh, we are, our adopted standards uh, do or do not meet or exceed the minimum requirements and that we are complying with them. Um, you have in your folder the, our, the Town of Chalice uh, Road and Bridge Standards, which I'm sure you all read very carefully. Um, so the first order of business would be to, um, we need a motion to sign this. And that makes us eligible for funding. Isn't that right? Maybe for discussion or? Um, well, then we'll get into a discussion about the standards. I mean, we have to do this like now in order to be eligible for funding. Or do you want to discuss whether or not we should even sign it? Oh, no, no, no. We would sign it. Let's just get that out of the way. Okay, okay. Yeah. but this is that we're adopting our current standards? Oh, they're yeah. adopted. They were adopted on, the 20, yeah. on uh, July 25th, 2022. Yeah. So those are the current standards. We're going to have a discussion about whether we need to um, talk, change it in okay. some way. Okay. So I'll take uh, right. So there's a annually you have to sign a a document from the state that says you do have standards in place. Right. Yes. Period. Yeah. And that's what this document that you're about to sign is. There's additional stuff on that document as well about the, the um, inventory. Yes, that's right. I wanted to ask you about that. Thank right. you. So that's the so we currently have what's called the road erosion inventory. It's 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 as up to date as it was in 2017 when it was first done. There hasn't been a lot of updating to it. The plan this coming year, and actually I think within the next two years, we are required by the state to have it updated in place. And the road crew and myself and Kari are going to work. So, so, it, so it's currently in place. We're currently, we currently do have a road corrosion in the place. It's just not, it's not totally up to date. Okay. We were told by Amanda, whose name is eluding me, who's with the Central Rock Regional Planning Council, that we updated them as we fixed them. Because I was in a panic last year that we had to have a ball of food, and she said, as you go and work on them, right. you update Well, we've been so working on them since 2017, and there's been no one doing, doing any updated on the inventory. So. Uh, so essentially, we'll have to go out around town and update everything that's out there. Okay. So we. Uh, and again, so the only thing that's required in the inventory are what's known as connected roads. So essentially, anything that's within a 200 feet of water is the only thing that's required by the municipal roads general permit. So we don't have to do everything. We just have to do the roads that are connected in the inventory. The other stuff is like doesn't really matter. Uh, although while we're out there, we might as well do it. That's not what it says, Toby. It says we certify that we do or do not have an up-to-date highway network inventory which identifies location, size, deficiencies, <clears throat> conditions of roads, bridges, causeways, culverts, etc. on class one, two, and three town highways. So it's all... Uh, and, it, and that may be what they intend for us. I mean, we certainly can do it. But the, the municipal roads general permit only requires the connected roads to be... Um, inventory and, and, and address. And mm -hmm. essentially, 
<clears throat> when the municipal roads permit people look at our, so essentially there's a portal that we put stuff up on. Every segment that is quote unquote connected is the only thing they look at. They don't look at the other ones as far as the general permit goes. Uh, now the rest of VTrans may look at the other pieces of it to make sure you're doing that stuff. But the only thing the municipal general permit cares about is connected um, roadways that essentially bring sediment to the water, watershed. That's all they care about. They don't really look at the other stuff. Okay, but well, and, oh, yeah. and, we, and so we'll do we'll do the whole thing. Uh, that, yeah, because that's not what it says. That's fine. Any what questions? <laughs> Comments? Discussion? Would you like to move to sign this? So moved. Jamie's moved that we sign the certification of compliance for town road and bridge standards and network inventory. But should we be that we do not have any, they're not entirely up to date? I mean, is what that happens if we say we do not have an up to date highway network inventory? I, I can't tell you. That that's actually a new language this year. I've never seen that. Yeah, before. that was in last year. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, well, last year they just said, "Do you have standards?" Not, not an inventory up to date. And correct, yeah, me, correct me if I'm, not, I'm wrong, but like we we have discussed over the last year and a half uh, an inventory of culverts. I mean, we do have uh, a pretty good documentation of of the roads, their classifications, the uh, the culverts and infrastructure associated with them. It, it's just that we we may not we may not have. Uh, a, a, note, a note saying whether or not, you know, what their, what their status so is. So I guess the question is, what does up to date mean? Right. What's, what's the definition and what's the requirement for up to date? We do have an inventory. It started in 2017. Right. There have been some updates since then. Not, it's not the entire inventory that's been updated to whatever date we're signing this. Barbara? Jan has her hand up. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Jan? Yeah, uh, thanks. I am not sure whether this is part of your standards or not, um, but <clears throat> what we have just learned over the past week is that any repair of any bridge and culvert and road improvement of anything that is in the flood hazard area must have a permit signed by the zoning administrator at a minimum. There must be a, a paper trail showing that there's an approval for these kinds of things in order uh, to meet the requirements of NFIP. Now, I don't know if that is to become part of your local road standards or if this is something separate, but I, I'm bringing it up because um, it, in, the, in, in the agenda, it seemed like it, you had an overarching uh, thing. It's, it's not only just the road standards, it's what you have for standards for bridges and culverts and whatever else. And if, if your inventory is there uh, and you know where those culverts and bridges are, are they in the flood hazard overlay? And if anything in the future needs to be repaired, there has to be a, a firm documented approval process between the zoning administrator and the road commission. But what, what standards are we to use, Jan? The, the, the latest flood hazard overlay and our latest regulations. In the zoning regs. OK, that's why the zoning administrator. John's grinning. It's good. <laughs> Is John there? John is there. Yeah. John is here. Okay, good. He can talk to it. I'm here as an assistant CA. Let the full CA talk. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to say something, John? I don't know exactly how this would impact the road and bridge standards. I don't know if this language would be bolded in or, or if the road and bridge standards might just have a line in it that says refer to the Cala zoning regs for what requires a permit. A local permit and maybe something like that well i don't think that affects signing this document at least 
I'd like to get that out of the way and then get into the discussion. Yeah, I mean, as, as, as a kind of order of operations, from yeah. my perspective, it seems like the roads have been maintained relative to the standards that the town has adopted. We do have an inventory that is in need of continuous improvement. That seems like a, a living document. And we've done a lot of documentation over the last year relative to uh, infrastructure items. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm comfortable certifying that document with the language that it has. I just, I think separately though, we'd have a charge as a, as a board and a town, I guess, to revisit the, uh, the language in the road standards relative to maintaining that inventory um, in the process through which we do it. And then also um, updating, you know, probably reaching out to um, Central Vermont Rural Development to, to make sure that we have a clear understanding of, of the language that may need to be included in, in the road standards. And in the not too distant future, we'll need to, to readopt standards that, that make those particular inclusions. So I do wanna talk about a process in a minute. Yes. Let's, yeah. let's get this, uh, yeah. this done. So, so would you move this? So if everybody else agrees with that, I'd make a motion to accept uh, the certification of the road standards and uh, the, the inventory, the town's inventory of, uh, of roads. Okay, do we have a second? So Jamie seconds, further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Carr, you have one you can pass around for us to sign. Okay, now let's get into the standards. Um, Thanks, Carr. Toby has work, been working on um, a document in which he's proposing some changes to the so, road so, Well, let, let me just so, explain something yeah. before you, just a sec, Toby. Yeah. We didn't see these. Um, they, they accidentally did not get in our folders. So I didn't even know this document existed until this afternoon, and I presume none of the rest of you have had a chance to look at it. This is a draft that Toby wrote in which he's added some standards. So uh, what I'd like to do is ask Toby to tell us a little bit about it and then talk about a process that we might engage in to determine what, what we might want to do to um, either accept these or review them or whatever, okay? So go ahead, okay. Toby. So the history is, in uh, I think it was in 2015, a committee of townspeople um, the Calus Roads Advisory Committee um, created the set of town and bridge standards which are in place and are readopted in July 25th, 2022. So that document um, has been in place for some time. It's been an acceptable document um, that we've been working on. In the interim, the state created the Municipal Roads General Permit. Now, the Municipal Roads General Permit has tighter and more specific standards that need to be met for those, um, those segments of road that are connected within 200 feet. So my thought process is that we need to bring in those, those other standards from the state required per permit standards and level them into our existing 2002 or 2022 standards. So I essentially took some of the, dip, the language from the state um, municipal roads general permit document. They have a um, they have a standard road and bridge standard form that includes an appendix that defines all of these standards. And I took the language from that and inserted it into our existing standards. That's just a, a temporary document for you guys to take a look at and see what's in the general permit that needs to be in our, you know. And again, so instead of having two separate standards, one state and one town that are in place at the same time, I'm trying to bring the minimum standards from the state um, recommended um, standards into our standards so that it's just for everybody. That's a process for you guys to take some time to look at and see. Most of it is specifications about ditch sizes, stone, um, stone ditches, uh, 
dams, etc., uh, ditch dams, stone dams in a ditch. And it's just language that's generic to the state standard under their appendix A. So essentially, when you take a look at my suggestions, it's just cut and paste and put in an appropriate portion of where our standards are, where they would fall. In, in, in so does it change our standards in any way? Not really. There's a couple of issues where the, the definition of a ditch is a little bit different. It adds some um, definition of what, when you use stone, stone line dams. It talks about um, design of stone dams in a ditch for steeper roads. Um, and um, for the most part, it's just definitions that meet the standard that the state wants in that we don't have in our current standard. And so when you take a look at it, you can take some time and say, OK, how much does this change or doesn't change what we already have? Um, some of it is just it, it wasn't in there to begin with, and it just adds a new parameter that needs to be in place for us to meet the standard for the state uh, general permit. Um, well, you guys haven't had a chance to even look at this, so uh, um, maybe we better put this discussion off for another day. Unless anybody has any questions for Toby right now. I, uh, Don? I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. The, all the stuff that's highlighted in green, is that what you've, what you've copied and pasted or changed? That's correct, Don. Okay. Thank you. And I made no changes at all to the language of the existing town document. These are just cut and paste from the state, appropriately placed where they might help clarify a design or a design standard in the document we already have. Um, do you have a question, Dwayne? Um, yeah, not, a, not necessarily a question. I think one of the, one of the things that I, I think would be beneficial for us to consider consider in the continued maintenance of a stand a supplemental standard essentially uh, from uh, from the state standard would be um, some actual cross sections that are like illustrative cross sections of and and so we then you know, I'm, I'm trying to think about this from a practical standpoint for the road crew, and, and that became, you know, the previously kind of a, a point of con contention. This is this is a lot of information to uh, to digest and maintain, and I think um, that for as a training document, it could be beneficial for us to maybe pursue having cross sections of road right. road construction. So there, so there's a document in the Vermont Local Roads that right. essentially has pictures and designs and shows dimensions and all of that stuff and. That whole document essentially talks about all of these things, and that's that's already there. We can just make sure we use it or highlight it or, or engage it as examples to, to be attached to this document. Yeah, I, I think it there may it may be the case because I've gone through kind of both of those, and there are there are areas where there are discrepancies between between their illustrate the things that they're illustrating and then and then what we're saying is is our standard. Right, and, and we I, can and we can just change those dimensions or whatever yeah. to match. So essentially the, the diagrams or the or, or whatever will just make a, a tune to what your standard is that you want to accept. Uh, yeah, I I think that'd be helpful to include those to the Yeah, I can pull those up and send them to you so you can work on those things as, as your process okay. Okay. continues. Questions? Other questions? Uh, I have one more. Yeah, Donnie. Um, Toby, do you know, just in my conversations with a couple of other town formats, do you know how many uh, towns actually have this standard, the state standard, if you will? Um, I don't know. I don't know who is. So essentially, when the, the general permit first came out there, the state then redid, so they had a template for town road and bridge standards that they sent to every town. It changed with the municipal roads general permit. And that is a state um, template that essentially, the first page is, yes, we have this, yes, we have this, yes, we have this. And then there's an appendix A that has all the specifics of the individual standards for the general permit. That's a, that's a uh, generic, road standard um, that's out there. I don't know what other towns, whether they just adopted that and not didn't have their own town standard, 
and again, a lot of towns, because they had to have a road and bridge standard, just used the template before without having any individual um, changes or adjustments to the, to the standard. So, so I don't know. I have no idea what other towns have accepted. But every town is required to have a road and bridge standard. And my sense is that the general permit now covers every town, and every town has to have some form of it in order to qualify under the general permit. And the connected segments are probably more than 50% of our road segments in town are connected to water, waterways and are in, in, in need of um, a, adjustment to that to the state standard for general permit. All right, Donnie, you done for now? Yep, thank you. Okay. Yep. <laughs> um, I have a question. Um, as I, I was reading this, uh, frankly, for the first time, mm -hmm. um, have we actually identified collectors, low traffic roads, and secondary roads? There's, there are three maps, or there's a map with th the three different colors on it um, that I don't know exactly where it is right now in the select board's mm -hmm. wealth of past documents. Mm -hmm. I probably can dig up my copy of it to provide to you. I think at one point I did make a list of what roads qualified under each one of those, and I can give that to you guys as well. Well, more importantly, does the road crew know about this? Because there are specific standards for how wide the road can be, et cetera, et cetera, depending on which kind of road is it. Does the road crew actually use this information? Um, I can't speak for the road crew's knowledge about that. Yeah, okay. Huh. That's, I'd like to find out. Maybe we can. I think. If, Go ahead, I Donnie. think if you look at Plain, Plainfield and East Montpelier, they do. That was why I asked Toby like, that question. I just kind of already knew. Sorry, what question did you ask, Donnie? I asked them how many other towns do the. Um, uh -huh. Oh. A lot of. If you look at East Montpelier roads and Plainfield roads, um, you can go, Cardinal doesn't have a whole lot of dirt roads, but they have the wider standards for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Jan's had a gut, Jan, you've got your hand up. Uh, thanks. Yeah, uh, the only question I have is, the last time I read the road standards relative to the connector, now I maybe don't understand this, but the connector was any road that uh, intersects with a major road, such as 14 or county. Is that correct, Toby? No, and I'll read you from the standard. A collector is a road that currently carries, Wait, or in the future, connector? should carry, a substantial portion of the tra traffic out of or into Callis via Route 14, the county road, and possibly Route 12 or Route 2. A collector, oh, okay. a collector is a road that does now, or the select board determines, should in the future functions as one of the functions as one of the primary routes to and from paved arteries. So, essentially, class two roads are cross town roads connecting from one side of town, north, south, or east, west. And class okay. two, so, so is a is a class two road that's mapped class two on our interactive maps equal to those connect connector collectors? Um, yeah, unless the okay. unless the earlier committee chose some other roads that fall under that, that's, and they've, they've specified it. Something. So <coughs> this is not, the collector does not equal class two. I, it doesn't spit say it's a class two. It just says it does this. They may okay. have identified another road that's not a class two that they consider a collector. And until I, okay. dig, until I dig up the map that they created and, and, and the list of roads that fall as collectors, I, you'd have, I, don't, I can't answer that question. Okay. Did you have a follow-up question, Jan? Yeah, yeah. So is Backstreet considered a connector because it attaches to M14? Jan, just to be clear, the, it's collector. It's a road that... I mean, collector, yeah. yeah. Okay. To, to my mind, it's a connector collector, but whatever, yes. Mm -hmm. But um, Backstreet 
attaches to or intersects with a major road, is it considered a collector? Well, I, I can't, so all I can tell you is that's an interpretation that whoever wrote this, the, the um, standard, they set, they set in place what those are. I can't tell you if that fell into it or not. They may have okay. said Marshfield Road down to the church and onto Route 14 was the, co the collector, and Backstreet was just a loop off of it, and it's not part of that system. I can't tell you that because I, I was not involved in making those maps. Okay, but now my, 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 my follow-up on that is, as I recall reading the road standards, the collector is what, 14 feet wide? Uh, 20 feet. 20. 20 feet, okay, thank you. All right. Which is the rod. See, I, I guess I'm going by our maps. When a mapper does a map, they go by rods, and we put our standards in, in feet. And I'm just wondering about consistency between Huh. What's on a map and what we have in a road standard. That, I guess that's all I'm raising, and I will now shut up. <laughs> no, no, don't shut up. Um, so there's a di difference between a road width and a right of way width of rods. So most of our rod right of ways are three rod wide, which is 50 feet. Now, what the road is in that 50 feet of right of way can be anything from 12 feet to 20 feet or whatever. And what the standard that we, the road standard that was adopted says, there are some roads that are 20 feet shoulder, you know, uh, shoulder to shoulder, others are 14 feet, others are 12. And they've determined by definition what those are, and that map would then tell you what, within that 50 foot right of way, is the travel path of the road. Okay. Yes, Rose. Good evening. Hi, Rose. <laughs> Hi. Um, I was part of the um, Callis Roads Advisory Committee, and I was a select board liaison, so the maps that Toby's referring to and some other data and whatnot, I know that I have all that stuff at home. So Toby's going to look for the map, but I can look for it, too. So, so in fact, the select board did. I mean, this says that within 16, six months of adoption, they were supposed to designate all this road, these yeah, roads. Yeah. And they did. And they did. Okay. Yeah. And right. they so there's a map, yeah. and, and cool. I, from the map, I actually pulled an Excel spreadsheet, so your li list of roads that fall under mm -hmm. each category. Mm -hmm. and, but, I, and I can dig that up if my computer database way well, back. From I think it's pretty important that the road crew have this. Right. <laughs> um, so yeah, we better get hold of those and make mm -hmm. sure that they understand um, what these standards are. Right. And and what the inventory is. I mean, this is, this is kind of going back to, to some of the dialogue that we've been having around um, the standardization of documentation and, and making sure we're linking or referencing very particular documents. Um, I guess I just found a new categorization for, uh, for documents, but it seems like you know, maps should be on there as a, a mapping record um, because in, in this standard, we should be <coughs> calling out whatever the map record is and whatever the inventory is uh, and, and what the items are that we want to be. So let me be clear, the road erosion inventory deals with crowding, ditching, sheeting, uh, drainage away, yep. and, and other stuff. It doesn't deal with road widths and it, that's not part of the state erosion inventory. So that's, that is meant to, the road erosion inventory is really to say, it does the road meet all the standards that we want to maintain to limit erosion from roads into the, into the watershed? That's all it does. If we want to create another layer that talks about width and other things, that would have to be something different that we would have to create yeah, additionally. That, that's so those parameters are not in the existing state road erosion. Just, just a clarification for you. Like, yeah, thanks. I think I, that's what you were looking for. That's well, what that's what I'm, that's what I'm proposing is that we be be working towards a, kind of a master inventory that collects those things for for the for the road crew that has right. okay. has those things in there because as we've been talking about these standards, there are always going to be exceptions that are made because of 
land features, et cetera, et cetera. And, and rather than revisiting the conversation over and over again about, you know, why isn't this happening in this particular spot, it would be nice to have that, those incremental exceptions documented as well. Um, and if we have those in a database form, they can pretty easily be mapped to. Right, and I'm not, I'm not sure how the state database for the erosion inventory could be expanded to put more data in there. I mean, essentially, we'd have to talk to the state about how we pull that down yeah. and then use it, use those, those factual information because yeah. it's the state portal that we don't have any control over how it's set up. Yeah. It's just a data, data entry portal for yeah. that then generates reports back. Is the uh, section added on ditching depth and shape a change to how we currently do ditching, or is it just a clarification to? Well, no, out? what it does is it says that's what the state expects in connected um, ditches. And that's, um, again, if you read the language above it and what we have in the current, it doesn't necessarily meet that same standard. It talks about a one to two, but it doesn't say two feet deep. It doesn't say those other things that are required by the state general permit. Well, it sounds like we'd better um, put this on the agenda for next time when we've had a chance to read through these. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and FYI, there is a state uh, state done culvert inventory. We have over 700 culverts in town, but that one has not been updated since 2015, I think. And I'm not sure what if the, if the in the past. Um, Central Vermont Regional Planning has been able to do some of that, but they're not, I don't know if they're doing that anymore. Mm. So we would either have to do it ourselves and hire somebody to come in and update it. So for the most part, it may or may not be up to date. A lot of new culverts that went in are not in the inventory. Because mm. the, the road crew was not updating that okay. state database. Did you say since 2018? I think, no, I think it was earlier than that. It's 2015 or 10, 2012. I just, I don't I'll know. just write for some time. Yeah. <laughs> for very, for, for since for a very long time. time. 20, 20 teams, <laughs> at least. Yeah, it's, it's been a while. So in some cases, the culvert's there, and it's a metal culvert, and it's 15 inch, and it's 40 feet, and it, there's fine. Other places, there's a culvert that nobody knows is there because it's not in the inventory. Mm. You can see it. Um, in fact, on Blatchley, on, on uh, Haggett Road by the um, Adamat store, there was a culvert buried in there that had been buried for who knows how long. It wasn't doing anything. So under there, we discovered it. It's not there anymore because it was not doing anything. But there may be a lot of those around town that are just essentially disappeared. They weren't functioning and they just got silted in and got covered over. But all the ones we changed are, um, as a result of the flood, those would be in the inventory? Um, if somebody sits down and puts them yeah, on. Yeah, I, I don't think last summer they were <laughs> sitting down <laughs> nine o'clock well, at so, night. So Mr. Mr. FEMA has GPS coordinates and information on every one that, that I had. So yeah. if it needs to be updated, I can put all that stuff in it. So it, anything that we did during the period okay, of those. Thank you, Toby. <laughs> okay. I couldn't get away with it. FEMA wants to know everything. <laughs> All right. So thanks. Yeah. We'll come back to this. OK. OK. Um, sorry, we are getting behind here. We do have a couple of curb cut applications now. Are you Mr. Poirier or Mr. Sparrow? Um, let's do yours first, then. OK. <laughs> um, actually, it's pretty straightforward. It you, is. You, You've all seen, you've all got the application, and you all see that um, Neil looked at it and has nothing to recommend, and the road crew looked at it and has nothing to recommend. Right, and no conditions. And with no conditions. Do we stand for? Somebody like to move that we approve um, Mr. Sparrow's application? Uh, I would make a motion to uh, to approve it as. As documented. All right. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Donnie. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Boyer is here as well. Oh, okay, good. I'm here on. Do you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. Thank you. 
Um, I think I would say the same thing about yours. So they are. Um, our tree warden and our road crew have looked at it and uh, offer no conditions. They think it's fine the way it is. Is that right, Kari? Yeah, the, this one, you should know that it already exists. This yeah. is an after the fact kind of a thing. Right. Yeah. So I'll take a motion to approve the um, Por Mr. Poirier's application for a permit. So move. Donnie moves and seconds. seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Easy. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I have one question for you. It's probably a, I'm all new to this, and I just barely bought that land like last year from Anna Smith. And so, I at the same time I applied for a curb cut, I also applied for a building permit where I want to build a little cabin up there with my grandkids. Do you know when that will be coming up? That would mean for the, the building permit. Have you applied? Uh, oh, I applied and paid for it all, yes. Okay, our zoning I, I administrator is going to, oh, okay. Go ahead, John. Uh, I wrote you a letter with my, with comments. Um, if you didn't receive it, I'll make sure I send it again tomorrow. I oh, I didn't receive anything, John. Okay, I'll send it again. I'm sorry you didn't get it. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Do you have the correct mailing okay. address? There's an email. There email, you yeah, it's keeper, keepersflooring at outlook.com. Got it. Got it. Okay. Mm. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, are those coming around? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, Route 14 in Marshfield intersection. Anne has been doing some work on that and is going to. Very brief about it, we, yeah, but um, we could borrow it right and down. We were hoping to have a neighborhood meeting last week. We all lost power in the village, so we did not have that meeting. But um, Keith Cubbin, I'm terrible with the last names, mm -hmm. uh, from Central Vermont Regional Planning Council has said that he will do a speed study on Route 14. Um, I did also mention that we, you know, we're hoping to look at Back Street and Marshfield Road and the issues with people coming off onto Route 14. I know one of my neighbors had someone pass her in front of the store when she came off Marshfield Road to come to the post office and someone right there, like, and drove right around her. Um, so I also had asked about the possibility of putting, I know Montpelier has uh, a, crosswalk by the high school that has these flashing lights that are kind of going all the time. Um, but I mentioned to Keith, it'd be nice if we could have some kind of queue because I don't know pragmatically how much we can do things to the road itself to slow traffic down so what other tools are available. So uh, we are in the process, I brought in Kari to do a site visit initially with Keith and there's another gentleman who was currently on vacation, which is why I don't think we've heard back yet, um, to take a look, see, and kind of talk more about it. And then, yeah, I hope to meet with the neighbors because I know there's a lot of ideas and um, hopes and, and I need to also pull in V-Trans because I don't know exactly what we can and can't do on Route 14, but I'm assuming they're kind of busy with Eclipse-related road stuff. So I'll follow up with her. Um, there was a traffic study done for all of those reasons, I think, about 15 years ago. And I can try and get my fingers on it. I, I had a copy, but I don't. Did I give it to you? Your 2004 no, you showed me that I did not. Um, well, then must uh, somehow it's not in the file. So I have a yeah. copy somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So, th so essentially, all those issues were addressed, and engineers looked at, and there were options provided. Um, at least what I saw it looked like primarily based on Back Street and Marshfield Road, as far as what direction of traffic. Well, and essentially, thinking. I think it was a, there was a, it was a consulting firm that was hired. It was an engineering the, firm. Yeah, and the state the state was involved. And one of the problems is the state needs accident data from there to really move ahead, move anything ahead, and there literally is no accident data that is significant in, in there. Um, so you're going to be dealing with anything you do that involves sidewalks or any kind of other s traffic controls on Route 14 are all going to have to be v trans issues. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be very friendly. 
about that because they don't see it to be a problem. So just understand that before you really delve into oh, it. Oh, no, yeah. No, we worked a lot with VTRANS last year. So, and I know, yeah, that is they're definitely a partner we have to bring on board, you know, but there are grants for um, crosswalks and, you know, at least they can do a current study in its current state. You know, we did have a major accident recently right there, someone coming off the road and getting T-boned. Um, it's gonna be uphill, yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> but I, we're I, still I, gonna I do it. I was telling you that, that it's deja vu all over again, and even the, even the discussion of putting a crosswalk in is gonna be very difficult because they, they don't see the, the need for it, unfortunately. And, uh, they, they have their standards about what they'll move ahead on and what they won't. So just be aware of that as you start this discussion. Yeah, well, Keith can help with that, can't he? Yeah. Are there two of these? Uh, there, there's just, yeah, two. I'll, I'll just mention that there was a specific suggestion of putting some kind of mirror up, mm -hmm. and John Redmond, who's the property owner of where the logical place, I guess, for this mirror would be, is open to that, and he um, would like to participate in a discussion like this. I don't know if he's part of your group. Uh, he was gonna come tonight, but then he realized it was the eclipse. So. <laughs> no, no. It's a sneaky thing. Yeah. There's one success that um, the pri uh, uh, no. old prior slot board did have was um, reducing the speed limit to after the ball field to 40. Um, we were able to have them move that 40 mile an hour sign out. And then we put up radar signs on either side of the village. Mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. so. What signs? Radar signs. Oh, yeah. so they have so the light, they play the speed, and I think they helped somewhat, but yeah, it's if you got people well, that are going to speed. Again, so care. the state, again, that's a right of way, it's the state right of way, and you've got permission to do that mm -hmm. at town expense. So mm -hmm. those are the steps that essentially the state has already adopted to try and deal with your, your concerns. Mm -hmm. But I've looked at the, the history of accidents in that, in that area. There's a, you can go online and there's a state accident reporting portal where you can look at that. And there's just not, not enough data to generate mm. what we're looking for as slow traffic now, as far as the state standard goes. They should talk about near accidents. Mm. I've been involved in a couple of those. Yeah, but they aren't recorded, unfortunately. Let's yeah. call the state police every time you have a near one. Actually, one of them was a state police car. It came whipping around the corner, <laughs> well, slammed on his brakes, and skidded sideways and missed me. <laughs> I thought about one of those nice wooden decorative signs down by that uh, speed limit sign that said, you know, entering East Callis Village, mm -hmm. established, you know, mm -hmm. 1790 or something, you know, like, and then people, you know, yeah, or that, something it can but like somebody like, would have to pay for it. But Marshfield has, you know, they have their please respect the village signs yeah. that are posted Just, along. And I didn't, and again, I need to talk to V Transfers about, yeah, right. what we can and can't. Yeah, but right. Okay, well, point. thanks. And should I put you on the next agenda? For sure, we might have more information there. Yeah, yeah. okay. Okay, good. Moving on, Nick. Been looking into moving the town hall generator. Yep. Absolutely. See, my role in the, the generator was as grant writer and as a point of contact with the vendor of Brookfield Service. We installed the generator in August last year. And shortly after the generator went in, it was obvious to everyone, I think, that um, it was really constricting congesting that corner of the parking area and the access out back and the ADA entrance. And uh, let's see, I, I had neglected to, uh, there had been informal uh, awareness, general awareness that a generator was going in, but I had neglected to uh, make a formal uh, request to the design advisory board about that didn't collaborate so that was a serious omission but in any case we met there to look at the new generator with the DAB <clears throat> and and uh, discussed different ways of making it better including moving the generator 
uh, the DAB asked me to get a quote from Brookfield Service on what it would cost to do that. And a month later, Brookfield Service sent us a contract um, saying $2,733, something like that. And I've been here for anyone wants to see it. Um, to move the generator up to 10 feet. And uh, ideally, you know, the DAB was recommending that we get it pushed back as close to the propane tank as possible, as far east toward the uh, pedestal of the electric meter as possible. Uh, so uh, nothing happened for several months. And then uh, we circled back to it again recently. And uh, I said, I. I mean, I want to first find out. I contacted Brookfield Service and say, is the quote still good? It was a 30 day quote. And please confirm the allowable minimum distances between the generator and the propane tank, the generator and the pedestal. And they uh, wrote back the next day saying, uh, minimum to, to the LP tank is 10 feet, minimum to the pedestal is 5 feet, and minimum to the Utility pole is 15 feet. That um, was unexpected because I uh, came out the next day and measured, and those are almost exactly within a couple of inches. We're, that's, we're, days right we're already yeah. there. Yeah. And so, evidently, um, and this discussion uh, never took place, so I'm aware of with them, they took those measurements and brought them right up to those uh, minimum permitted. So there it is. Um, I don't. I mean, there may be other ways uh, and creative ideas for um, repositioning it, but I, I can't. I'm not thinking of any. But please, you know, let me know if you do. Um, and so, uh, but that's a recent development. That seems within the last five days that we got this letter from Brookfield Service to those. In them. So we're, we're stuck there apparently, unless it's a good idea. And then. Um, Somewhat tangentially related is um, I started thinking about the what if we moved, what if we had this door uh, designated as the ADA compliant entry instead of that door, which would relieve some of that congestion right there. And um, sent to John and to Carter. And John said, it's a great idea, except we've already, um, we've already asked about that when the reconstruction was happening. On the building, and there is a, um, a non qualifying, I think it's the distance between the diagonal brace holding up the little roof over the door, the distance between that and the uh, center of the door handle, and a couple of other things, non compliant. Uh, so I contacted um, Vermont Center for Independent Living, Peter Yankee, who is, works there, and they have a contract to provide technical assistance on. Questions of ADA compliance. And, and Kari mentioned to me that Peter and Kari have walked around doing a kind of a compliance inspection in December. So uh, Peter's already pretty familiar with this site and the town hall, out of the town office. Uh, I said, Peter, is there, is there ever you know um, ways that you can get a variance if there's something that's close but not quite there or it's extenuating circumstances? And he said, Yeah, sometimes um, what, uh, I can come take a look. So. So uh, Peter is scheduled to come here tomorrow at 3 p.m. with his tape measure and his rule book. And I don't know if it's going to be a, a um, informal consultation or whether he's actually going to write it up. But he's going to give us a sense about whether there might be any opportunity for a variance. We don't go, want to go messing with you know, the door or the roof over the door and things like that. This is about whether he would find, uh, could identify some exceptional circumstance or say, well, it's not quite compliant, but it's, it's um, easier access to straighter shot for somebody coming in to the meeting room and so on. So that's about where it stands. If anyone, anyone, Kari uh, and is planning on, I think, still coming tomorrow to that meeting. And anyone else, I contacted John about that. And if anyone's interested, um, Peter said, the more the merrier. So, any questions? So, with the inability to move it where DAB would prefer it, 
is that sort of in their perspective, DAB perspective, then that's it and it's okay to stay there? I haven't had that conversation uh, with you. I sent them the information, I sent them uh, the letter, the email from Aquafield, uh, but I haven't had that conversation with DAB. So that's it. That's do you, do you want to chime in, John, or do you feel you have to talk to everybody else before you could say anything? No, I John don't is know. on the DAB. I don't know. Wouldn't know what to say. I mean, mm -hmm. if, if we were starting from scratch, then the DAB could talk about all other locations. Now we're talking about keeping it sort of in the same area. We're hoping we can move it a little bit. If we can't, we can't. It's just going to sort of the aesthetics are most important to the DAB. Um, it has nothing to do with the ADA door. Um, and whether, the, whether this is the dedicated ADA door, that is, people are going to choose whatever door they want. Um, mm -hmm. just, yeah, I, I think screening had come up in, in previous conversations. Is, is screening still a, a possibility uh, for a, as like a plan B? If, if we put a screen in, that will further impinge the the clearances around that corner obviously because i'm i'm assuming like most other electrical components there's going to have to be like at least a three or four foot clearance um, just from any other kind of physical obstruction uh from it but um but but maybe that's not the case and maybe it can be a little bit closer but that would screening was something the dab asked for besides the move yeah something appropriate in an historic district Lilacs or something that would sure. look nice. Yeah, but maybe vegetation. I haven't asked that question, and I, I, that's a good suggestion. I'll contact Brookville about that. Um, if there's, oh, I'm sorry, can I No, go ahead. Okay. Uh, if we were able to move the door, ADA door over here, that would relieve the situation a little bit because uh, there's. John mentioned that there's still a compliance issue, outstanding issue with getting the grading right. And if the grading's right, that can, you know, confines the vehicle access a, a little more. And um, the currently the distance between the generator and, and the corner of the porch is 17 and a half feet, uh, which in the face of it sounds ample, but but it's not really ample when you um, try to uh, to make the and tell me if I have this wrong. Grading to the door needs to be corrected. Uh, and so that would squeeze things more. So we might pick up some breathing room by moving the door. Actually, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, you could, uh, if, if this became the dedicated ADA door, then you could fiddle with the grading at that door any way you wanted the gravel outside. So what's going to happen next is you guys are going to meet and talk about. This is the first I heard, but uh, Center for Independent Living can't grant a variance, but they could write a persuasive letter to uh, the fire marshal who administers the code, and we could ask for a, a change in designation from one door to another. I, I suspect they'll be agreeable to that. So. But in terms of the DAB approving some kind of screening? It's like I say, it's unrelated to uh, the right. ADA access. Right. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not the chair of the DAB, but I can write the two surviving members of the room. We're down to three now. <laughs> You're getting We're going to appoint another one today. All oh, right. <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll ask them what they want to do about it. We've got to meet, we've got to meet in Ken's Corner anyway soon, so we might as well throw this on our list of things to do. Okay. Uh, uh, available to join that in our public okay. discussion. All right. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> okay. For a little bit, I know. I <laughs> sure it a, if, if I had to rewind the movie, <laughs> I've got a lot of different type of scenarios. Uh, all right. Anything else on that one? Uh, I would just say, I guess to that to that end, that it would be good to know what Brookfield says about clearances for both structural and ve vegetative uh, screening, uh, just just to have it as as useful information for consideration, but. You know, I, who knows what money is available in the future uh, before, you know, I think we commit to any kind of screening. I think we should probably take another look at 
we were starting over and we did want to relocate it, where where would that be? Um, and 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 just see if there there's a, another grant that's available for for relocating it before we before we commit to a screening solution that then has to either be undone or reconstructed or something or other. But, um, but other than that. But I will I'll follow up with that. And just from my personal perspective, and it's not representing um, any other group, uh, I'd love to see the whole the whole thing screen, you know, yeah. stanch and cool. you know, mm -hmm. um, the tank generator. Mm -hmm. It'd be really nice to have something uh, mm -hmm. around because that tank really looms large too. Yeah. Well, thanks. Sorry. Just to add that uh, when Peter came and inspected this building and the office, his primary recommendations were to provide smooth surfaces to, uh, surfaces to the doors, the entrances. So ideally, he would said pay the entire lot in both cases, but at a minimum, get from wherever the parking is to to that door. So where that fits into our long term planning. Okay. All right. Thank you. Personnel policy. Policy committee's been working hard on this. The uh, attorney has reviewed it. Um, Thanks, Debbie. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you're, you're not staying. Be, you're, are you staying because you want to? Because we don't. I was listening, but I couldn't. We don't, no, I'm not kicking you out. <laughs> I, I just want to be sure you're not staying because you think you have to. Oh, no, definitely not. Okay. That's all. Okay. This has been very interesting so far. <laughs> well, boy, do we have a job for you. <laughs> I was thinking about that one. <laughs> for the crosswalk you guys want to put in, what if we moved the bus stops and made a huge, made a school bus stop? <laughs> Whoa. Because you already use the, you already use the post office and the store, but if there was only one, store. you have a majority of school kids right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Just put that in the mix, right? Yeah, yeah. just but like all the older kids yeah. do catch the bus at right. the store, the younger kids. But if they happen to have to yeah. combine things or something, if you moved them, shifted them over to one, that might help you build that. Right. It's good to know. Thank you. <laughs> All right, personnel policies. So um, also BLCT review, reviewed it and made some comments. And uh, here it is, if... And, and it's based on the BLCT model template, which our current policies are based on. So it's actually, there's not you know, so many major changes. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. And we've reviewed it to ensure that it meshes with other policies. So. Um, actually, Jordan and I were both on the committee, so I guess I would say, Anne, Donnie, and Jamie, do you have any questions about this or comments or concerns? No, I, y'all put a lot of work in it. It is, yeah, very different <laughs> from the original one. Um, very comprehensive and, yeah, very good eye for human resources. I did want to ask one question with outside employment. Like concerning the road crew, because like when Peter was with us, he did odd jobs on the weekend that often precluded him from um, being called in. So is that going to be, you know, is it considered just like their the regular Monday to Friday schedule, or I just didn't know if that would impinge on if you know people so are. Review it. So primary occupation of a full time employee should be with the town. Please well, it, it says that it, their supervisor could approve it. Yeah. So that would be you, Kari. Yeah. In this so, case. so at our discretion. So they would just need to like make you wear okay. I usually do. Yeah, we'll work it out. Okay. Right. Maybe. We want to be reasonable about it. But yeah. the but the road crew are going to be uh, governs. Their contract supersedes this to a certain extent. Right. Um, so. Uh, so that. That kind of aligned, I think, with that, with, with the language. We, we tried to bring it as close to the, uh, to the language in the, in the contract, contract as possible yeah. so that, um, that everything was kind of subject to uh, the employer's approval. Uh, and I think we added a bit in there that 
it was not perpetuity. If at some point it was, it became an issue, we, we reserved the right for the uh, for the manager to, to say something. Um, yeah. Okay. But for as far as road crew goes, yeah. So you're retaining the ability. Yeah. To know if it's not working. Well, we want to be reasonable. Yeah. I know it's not necessarily applicable now, but. Anything else? No. Donnie, Jamie, any, anyone? Barbara has a question. Well, let me <laughs> give this light board a chance. Okay, Barbara. Will you entertain a question? Yes, please. Um, is there the possibility of grandfathering in for those of us who have been working under the current policy and now something has dramatically changed? So for example, um, you now capping vacation approval to 30 days, and I've been working for the last many years under the policy where there was no cap, and can that be grandfathered as an exception because otherwise I'm gonna lose three weeks of vacation. Uh -huh. Wow, okay. I think that's, we're gonna to have to talk about that. I think the policy committee probably ought to talk about it, don't you? <clears throat> and make a recommendation on that. That was the first we'd heard of it. It's the first, I mean, it's just the it's first we've seen it, seen the new policy. Yeah, so. yeah, no, no, no criticism. I'm just saying, <clears throat> um, don't let us forget it. We'll, well, let's talk about it next time we meet. Okay, but I mean, if you guys approve this policy tonight, we'll, we'll be able to make an, we, an exception. You, you won't close the door on that. Okay, thank you. Right. And, it, and it's also, it's a, it's a dramatic decrease in the accrual of sick days as well. I've also accrued more sick days than what this is capped at, but that's not dramatic the way my vacation accrual is. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, in that case, would somebody like to move that we approve and sign? Is that what we need to do? I guess we approve the policy. Adopt. We adopt and sign the policy. So Anne has moved it. Second. Jordan seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Opposed? Thank you. Curry has a copy coming around. Um, next, next, the committee is going to, I think perhaps even by next week, we're, the committee is going to bring you a whole bunch of other just in house policies like financial policy and purchasing policy and banking policy that we've sort of been working on. And hopefully we'll get all these policies cleaned up and we'll move on to ordinances soon. <laughs> okay. And I had a question. Uh -huh. um, is there a date on this for, oh, it's gonna have today's date? Yeah. Yes. Motion to approve and adopt the revised personnel policy dated today? No. It's dated, it is dated April 8th, yeah. Is there a signature to page that needs to be signed? It's coming around. Okay. Okay, Curtis Pond Dam. Jamie, we have some news. Do we? Well, we have a. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes. I guess this isn't news. This we, isn't big news. So, coming. yeah. So, as um, when the bids came in high, um, and we went to the value-added engineering process with Larry Hebert, one of the bidders. Um, we knew that that was taking um, engineering time above and beyond what was in the original contract for that phase of getting us through the bid process. Um, so this is an amendment to the contract of getting us through the bid process. Um, it's not anything we have to pay right now. Um, but it's an additional, I believe, $16,000. Yep. Um, and I had a long chat with Michael, um, and we've been brainstorming ways to deduct. If you remember that the final engineering contract that we haven't actually signed yet, but, but we'll be looking at soon, is for construction oversight, uh, which I believe was budgeted for 90, do you remember, Kari, 92? Thousand ninety five thousand something nine. like that yeah. in there somewhere in the low to mid ninety thousand. Um, he they 
He thinks that he can make up the 16,000 overage or close to it with reductions off of where that ends up. Um, and that there's, you know, there's, it, it's basically dependent on what level of employee in the firm has to be supervising what part of construction. Um, so they can have some lesser paid newer employees oversee some other sections of it um, that they're qualified to do. Um, so he's, he's represented that we'll still be able to come in um, within the 150,000 that we have budgeted for engineering, uh, even with this overage. Um, so I'm recommending we go ahead and sign this. Um, I have a few other updates, but are there questions on this specific? I would just want to know that it doesn't tack on more to the town. That's always my caveat, but. I mean, that's the, yeah, I mean, as far as we are working through this process, we're still on budget. Um, and your fundraising. Yeah. And you've got the loan. Yeah, so I, I'll move into related updates. Um, I've been talking to, I had an email exchange with Stephanie Smith, um, who is the representative we're working with through the BRIC program, which is the Department of FEMA, or the Project of FEMA, I don't know exactly how it works. Um, that would be administrating the $525,000 that was earmarked in the federal budget for the Curtis Pond Dam. In Bernie Sanders uh, in section. In Bernie Sanders yeah. section, yep. Uh -huh. um, initial communications indicate that it's probably not gonna be super helpful to us. Um, they have a whole process FEMA has to go through um, to approve the project before they can administer funds um, and what they're currently saying is that they need to go through that process and approve the project before the project starts and that they won't uh, be doing any appro project approvals until September. They won't just do it now? So. Yeah. Um, so Did you ask, talk to Bernie about that? Yeah, I've had some back and forth with his office. Um, I'm still working on different tacks, trying to connect the right person, talking to the right person to see if there's a workaround. Yeah. Um, but, um, and that, you know, CPA board and a bunch of other people have been talking and it doesn't seem, because the CPA has the loan, because we have the funding to be able to do it this year, even without the Bernie money. You know, some people have said, well, maybe we should wait a year and then we can use this money. Um, but everybody thinks that's a bad idea. <laughs> um, the price could go up that much again and we'd be in the same boat. There could be disasters. Um, so the current understanding is still what it was last time that we'll be working with Larry in the coming weeks. Um, fine-tuning an agreement and the CPA will finalize the loan, collect the funds. We've collected almost all outstanding pledges. There's a, there's a few kicking around still. Um, and we expect to be able to transfer the money from the CPA and the community center to the town uh, in the next couple of weeks. And then the town will have in its coffers, the full $1.2 million budget um, and be ready to move forward. And if we get some, get some Bernie bucks by, you know, I'm working with the engineers, there might be some things that, um, you know, we can kick to the following year. Mm -hmm. uh, some, you know, taking out the riprap that we put in after the flood, that's a eight or ten, twelve thousand dollar project. Um, it, it's unclear if we would be able to move stuff around to still use some of the federal money to pay for pieces of it, uh, but 
we're looking into those options. Okay. Questions for Jim? So going back to the first point about the engineer contract supplement, I'd say to your concern, I think best case scenario, it's sort of a wash if, if the engineering can come in under contract. The worst case scenario, it eats into our contingency budget. Um, and I suppose there, there may be a way to I don't know if the if the borrowing amount is set at this point or if that could be expanded, but I think there's still a commitment that the town is going to contribute no more than it already has um, obligated at this point. Yeah. That any, anything above and beyond is coming from some other source. Yeah. And and I don't know what it means to not accept this because they did the work. And right. Yeah. Like, oh you know. no, we need yeah. to do yeah. it. I just you know, <laughs> I don't want to hold on that saying something later because that doesn't feel terribly pragmatic when you're dealing right. with engineers. So well, yeah. <laughs> I just want to know what it somehow. It'd be interesting to get a little more clarity on, on like what the uh, what the construction management um, portion in, includes. You know, because my, my understanding of uh, those those fees is uh, it, it, it's somewhat subjective um, because if there's already a working relationship between the contractor and, and the engineering firm, they, there's not a lot of like plan interpretive support that is required um, for for like facilitating the project um, and and how much of that you know ninety thousand dollars give or take is is allocated to like that kind of plan interpretation support uh, versus how much of it is like. Uh, making sure that somebody's on site to make uh, like compliance, you know, related. Where, you know, I could absolutely see that on the compliance side of things, you know, who, who in the firm is doing the compliance um, exactly. is going to have have an effect there. But I would also expect that a certain amount of that interpretive uh, services uh, would would be reduced because because Larry's been working directly with them to modify these plans. Um, so if, if Michael could like maybe speak to that, that would be, in, in the future, that would be good, good to know. But my, my yeah. assumption is that, that that's gonna be part of why he's saying, or why he's comfortable saying that we should be able to come under budget on that. Right, absolutely. And I've asked him when we are looking at that contract to provide a more detailed yeah. breakdown of exactly where those funds oh, are. Perfect. Yeah. And you think that contract is forthcoming in the next two weeks, say? Yeah. 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 I think it's been drawn up. I think. Okay. Um, Seems like it's time. It's, yeah. 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 And, and we're still on and schedule to start in, in June. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. As far as everyone's saying, we're still there. The, there's a little bit of a, um, still a little bit of back and forth going on, I think, between Michael and Larry and Dam Safety. Um, just like very minute, I know. Um, but so I think that the reason we haven't seen the final contracts is there's still some conversations happening over on the side there. Uh, I'd make a motion to approve uh, the, do we all need to sign it or do we just need to no. it's just Jamie. It's yeah. addressed to Jamie. To authorize Jamie. Yeah, I'd make a move, uh, motion to authorize Jamie to sign the amended Boy King budget modification for design it's change a, orders. It's a contract amendment. Contract amendment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Rose, you all sit there? Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, we've also gotten a, um, uh, the, the Conservation Commission has interviewed and would like to recommend Claire Haskell for the four-year term ending in 2028, and they have also said that they're getting, well, Larry's here, they're getting more interest in the planning, I mean, the Conservation Commission, and they don't, at this time, wish us to reduce the seats, yeah, the number of seats. Yeah, we would hope that you could just leave it as, as it is. Um, when Claire comes on, we'll only have one vacancy. There's not anybody immediately available to do that, but 
Claire makes the third person in less than a year that we've attracted to the commission. So we feel pretty good about where we stand personally. Oh, and can I repeat what you, you said in your nice note to me about the select board, giving us credit for some of that? Well, I mean, <laughs> it's just a, you know, a largely uninformed observation, but it seems like there's a, you know, a movement in um, willingness uh, of people to join the local commissions and, and bodies, um, the planning commission being the primary example of that. Um, <clears throat> and I would guess that a part of this, this enthusiasm could be connected to everything that happened last year and the disasters that hit this town and the way they were dealt with so well by a lot of people, including you folks, that it, it might have been part of what's encouraging the younger people to say, yeah, I need to step up, because that's what seems to be happening on small scale. Pat yourselves in the back, thanks. Yeah, well, yeah. Also, and also, yeah. Barbara's down a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keep her on list. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So, uh, motion then to appoint Claire Haskell. You saw her <clears throat> uh, note that she sent mm -hmm. um, to the Conservation Commission for a four year term. So moved. Jamie's moved. Second. Jordan seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Uh, and Chris Cochran, who was on the design advisory board before. He was on the Historic Preservation Commission, yeah. and he used to run the Historic Preservation Division, didn't he? Yeah. He has uh, offered to serve on the Design Advisory Board for a four-year term ending in 2028. So, um, would you like to appoint him? So moved. So, Jordan's moved. Second. And is seconded. And Tulin, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Um, I want to report that I've exchanged some emails with folks on the Historic Preservation Commission. It turns out that they were created by ordinance, <laughs> oh, which is a little strange, but it seems to be an ordinance. Uh, I actually pulled it out um, because we are giving them some actual responsibility to enforce some, some uh, laws, some state laws. Um, and under this ordinance, We've agreed that they're going to have a majority of seven members. I'm sorry, at least seven members. So we can't reduce it below that if we want to still be eligible for, I'm not going to remember what it stands for, certified no, local government, certified local government money. All right, this, this is what makes us eligible for that money. And they've used it to do a lot of projects in town. So can you clarify whether or not that so the ordinance dictates the seven, but does anything else dictate that it has to be seven or? No, state law says at least three and no more than nine. I see, okay. But, but the, so this but is- to, this to make a change, it would need to be in the ordinance. It would be, need well, to be the ordinance. if we were to change it, we'd no longer be eligible for this money that's been, we've been using for a lot of the projects that they're doing. Because we would not be following this ordinance, right? I guess what I'm what I'm saying is, if we wanted to make a change, it would be a change to the ordinance, the subject to the ordinance revision. I guess so, yeah. If we wanted yeah. to change it to five, for instance, if we were having a hard time, you know, maintaining a quorum of seven, uh, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But. But in they're, any they're case, they, they're sense. asking us not, not to reduce. We could reduce it by, it's nine currently. We could reduce it to, to seven, but they're actually um, mounting a recruitment effort and asked us not to do this yet. I also had a discussion with them about coming to talk to us, and they jumped on it. They said, yes, we've been doing all this wonderful stuff over the years, and we would love to come and tell you about it. So I would like to invite them maybe to the next meeting um, if possible, if not one after that, we'll have to see. All right, we'll hear from them. Okay. Um, Energy Committee, Bill Powell is um, <coughs> calling a meeting. We've got a few more people who've been interested in the meeting. I've directed them um, to, to use the meeting to talk about what kind of a structure the Energy Committee would be, whether it would be advisory or 
a standing committee or something else and what they would see as their mission statement. There are a few people who would like to be involved in the discussion at that level who don't want to serve on the committee. So Bill's working on that. He asked that at least one of us go to that meeting. So would any of you be interested in going to the organizational meeting? Or not? it's not even that. It's the meeting to discuss what the organization of this committee should be. Is it scheduled yet? They have not scheduled it. Okay. He's planning to do it by Zoom. Uh, I'm just yeah, involved. Okay. Yeah, go uh, it, it can be more than one of us. Yeah. I, I'm thinking I, I'd probably go. Yeah. Depending on when it is. Right. Okay. I'm just I'll tell you. So I'm interested. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. happy to, to listen to it if I can. Okay. Um, that, uh, they would love that. They would love that. So I will let Bill know that we are all interested. Well, Donnie, I not, didn't hear from you. It depends on when it is. Yeah, okay. In Energy Committee meeting. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of interest, but it's as, as um, a couple of people have pointed out, so far all the interest is coming from the, the usual players. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping that once they've got a mission statement, no. we, can, we can try to recruit some younger people, pull them in. Okay. Development Review Board. Um, Willa and I, Willa is the vice chair of the Development Review Board, um, we've been talking about holding a joint meeting with the two boards. Willa and I are going to meet on Thursday to talk about what that might look like. They're meeting tomorrow to talk. Um, just to have the discussion, as we've talked about it in the past, about what kind of direction we'd like to see them be thinking about. I'd like to be clear that we cannot talk about specific cases because they decided those cases, um, you know, they can't talk about those. And we can't talk about what we did in executive session, so we're not going to talk about individual people. We're just going to be talking about policy and um, process and stuff. So, um, do you guys want to, I'm going to talk to Will on Thursday, do you guys want to throw out some ideas for some times? First of all, do you do you like this idea of just the two boards meeting in a joint meeting? I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, you, uh, so you're thinking that would be a a, uh, a special meeting as opposed to something that would be tacked onto a regular meeting? Could it, yes. Yeah, it wouldn't be a five o'clock before a select board meeting. It could be. I guess months. that's an option if that's what you prefer. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> than I feel like I've been a pretty strong proponent of the marathon ones, and I'm still, yeah, I'm getting pretty burnt out. Um, I, I'm open to any of it, but I, it would be, it's, it's an important conversation, and I, I, what sometimes I think is, um, if we have a full agenda or something like that, that we have a tendency to want to kind of wrap up the, the conversation and move on. And I, I think if it works for everybody's schedule to have a, a special meeting that 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 can we we can we don't we don't have the pressure of other other agendas immediately preceding it, I, I wouldn't be opposed to scheduling a separate night and dedicating some time to it for sure. Maybe on an alternate week from when we have our. Oh, right. that's on what I, I, I also have day. like emergency management every Tuesday after this yeah. like board. So. Yeah. so I can suggest that to them. A, a Monday at six o'clock. Yeah. Does that work for everybody? Okay, yeah, that, that's a good idea. Or even right. a Saturday. I mean, I don't. Know. Even a Saturday? I work on Saturdays. Oh, so sorry. Yeah, later. Well, Saturday yeah. afternoon, and you close at noon, don't you? I close, but yeah, I can come in. Saturday. They only get a day and a half off, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'll suggest Monday at six. I bet you we can find a Monday that we can all do. Okay. All right. Great. Ah, conservation commission expenditure. I bet that's why you're here. It is why I'm here. Yeah. You know, I'm not even sure you need our approval for this. It's all in the budget, but go ahead. Okay. Well, I, we weren't we weren't sure about that, um, and I. I apologize for taking up your time for such a relatively uh, small amount of money, at least, but it's an important project, and um, <clears throat> I think it's become clearer since the, the budget process, when since Lakes and Streams has now specified what the subjects are going to be, um, that this is 
truly going to, should be, if it comes out the way they hope it would, uh, a, a real benefit to the town and its citizens, especially the people who own property around the lakes and ponds that are covered by the new um, zoning regulations. Um, this is going to be something that everybody should have in their lakeside or streamside house, you know, sort of tacked up on their bulletin board. It's not something that could be fobbed off on front porch form or anything else because it's going to cover and explain to ordinary people, one hopes, what exactly the plan uh, commission did and we voted to approve uh, for regulation around uh, lakes and streams, particularly uh, lakes. And so they're going ahead with it and the Conservation Commission felt like of all the things that we might want to use the education money for this year, and there could be a number, that this is really the most important thing, I think, because of the service that it's providing to the, to the town. And so we're just asking if we can use that money. If we don't need your permission, then we'll just do it. <laughs> I don't see why you're taking things out of your own budget here. Well, because we well, come to you back in the in the budget process and ask for a specific line item, which we were grateful that you that you did. You authorized seven hundred fifty dollars. I frankly was expecting to get nothing out of it. So, um, <clears throat> but but so so we you know we, we went through a round where we asked you guys for a lot more and things were tight, so we didn't get it. But we still need a lot more. We, we I wear two hats here among both of these bodies. Um, it, it can't be done adequately. It's pretty clear unless we have the six-page fold-out, and that's about uh, not quite eighteen hundred dollars based on the publisher's um, estimate. And uh, <clears throat> if we add this money from the conservation commission, we've got a thousand dollars. So we're looking at about seven hundred fifty dollars coming from somewhere else. Um, We've made a proposal or request to the Maple Corner Community Center for some support. Uh, I think maybe we didn't, haven't done as good a job there in explaining why this is really important and, and merits their aid. I think, I think the letter just may have skated over that a bit too much. But in any event, we're just trying to get this thing out this, this summer or early fall. Um, and just wanted to be able to add a few more dollars to the uh, to the pot we have for paying for this. If you want to authorize some more, we wouldn't object. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there, but we're not uh, asking for it. See, Jordan, you wanted to disagree with me? Oh, no. Oh, not well, I necessarily. I was just wondering, you know, I, I'm hearing what, um, what Larry is saying, and I think it is, it's a significant change in the, uh, in the regs that would kind of behoove Everybody, so I'm wondering actually uh, if there's a dedicated item in the planning uh, planning commission's budget for for com like communication. We call that situation. I mean, would, for one, it's not appropriate. I think I think we we cut the we cut cut most of their requests. I don't think they have like a communication or newsletter one. It's just for the like town plan work. Um, yeah, they have 200 for uh, education and training. That's it. <clears throat> I am probably not. So I, second, I, second I, to that. I'm working against myself, but yeah. the planning commission, you know, this is a big year for them to yeah, yeah. the town plan. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Jamie. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought you wanted to say something. No. Okay. Well, if we don't need your authorization, then we'll. Go Thank forward you. with that. Yeah. I appreciate that guidance. Uh, one other thing I want to say before I shut up and hopefully head to the door there is one item uh, that I couldn't uh, get on your agenda. Uh, it concerns the survey of the town forest, the Bliss Pond Town Forest, our biggest and frankly most important one, that Paul Hannon has been working on pro bono for us for several years now, hoping he could do the whole survey project at, without cost to the town. That's relatively recently um, become clear that's not happening because come May 31st, Paul is out of here and won't be working on anything, probably, certainly not this. Um, so he has been working with a, a professional surveyor on this for quite some time. And they've talked about um, her finishing it up and how much she would probably charge 
is probably going to be between 3,500 and 5,000, depending on how much work she has to do. Paul estimates that what he's already put in pro bono would have cost the town well over $10,000. So he and I both would like to come in front of this body, hopefully at your next meeting, because the meeting after that, he's going to be a Massachusetts resident, I think. So, and just to, to talk to you about this and why it's important and, and, and uh, necessary. Um, and where the money, we hope, can come from. If, if it's uh, where are you hoping the money will come from? That uh, we'll find it, or do you have some ideas? Uh, well, it, it, well, we see this as a as a kind of standard town property maintenance issue, and not something that we would hope would would uh, be paid for from the conservation fund because we're very optimistic that in the coming few years that money's going to be an important part of uh, supporting a number of conservation projects, land conservation projects in, in town. Um, I did find, <clears throat> and I, I don't have it with me, and I don't have the exact terminology, but at some point, the last time there was a harvest 30 years ago, generated about $14,000, and uh, the I guess it was the Conservation Commission at the time, uh, thought they worked out an arrangement with the select board that that $14,000 could be used to pay for things necessary in the town forest. I'm not aware of it ever being used for anything, so I can't make a you know an absolute airtight case that there should be at least $14,000 floating around here somewhere. That That's very uh, optimistic, Larry. Uh, very optimistic. So, uh, <laughs> but so I, I, I'm sorry about it. just throwing this in your lap. It should come to you. In a, in a more of a formal, detailed uh, proposal and, and understanding. I just wanted to mention it tonight because I didn't want to throw it in your lap. Appreciate that. Um, you know, before you heard about it. Larry, can I charge you with when we get that presentation? I'm curious whether or not you had mentioned that the that the town forests are under um, a management plan that included harvest, but I'm wondering controversial topic, but there are programs that offer um, uh, payments for carbon, sequest, uh, mm -hmm. carbon sequestration, and I wonder if, if we maybe not that considered that. Um, it'd be interesting, especially yeah. now since there's been the change to land use regs that includes uh, old growth forest de designations and mm -hmm. may, may be in some sort of tandem Designation that uh, that we could generate more revenue through um, through a program like that as opposed to a more traditional harvesting program. Yeah. Well, it, it would come as no secret to one or two people in this room, but perhaps others. But there's been an active proposal in front of the, <clears throat> the conservation commission now for five or six years that um, that the town be asked to designate the Blispon Town Forest as a uh, as an old growth regeneration area under state law now you probably call it a, an ecological reserve area they keep changing the names um, it's been my proposal <laughs> <laughs> and and it's still out there it's not been resolved there's a um, it has we haven't brought it to an actual vote of the, the uh, commission we all do agree however that it's the kind of decision that has to be made or should be made by the people themselves sure by a vote at, at a town meeting but but yes, the, the kind of thing that you're proposing, I think, would be consistent with with an old growth designation. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Is is there a management plan for the forest? There is. It's it's twenty years out of date. I think he wrote it. <laughs> you are you you're a forester? No, no. He was a chief. Are you, you were the chair of the conservation commission. That's ancient history. Okay, so I'd like to drag that closer to the present, but he's a busy man. So, so we're not in. Well, why would we be in current use? I presume we don't tax our own forest. No, right. Yeah. Okay. The, the beauty of the town land is that you know you can do whatever you want with it, including selling it if you want to. It's not subject to any of the sort of tax or other general regulations. It's the ideal piece of property. To, to do what you think is best for without regard to 
any tax or other. Why is it important that we survey it? There's a survey? Yeah, why is that important? Well, because, um, for instance, just to, to pick a couple, uh, there was some unauthorized lobbying, apparently, in 1987. Oh. That could well have been because they came across the line because nobody knows where the line is. The, the second thing is, um, the, 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 the property lines, as shown on the, the town's interactive map for that forest, <clears throat> are so inaccurate that, that, that laughable is the kindest word for them. And if you look at the eastern property line that is mostly um, shared with the Ballantines, uh, it's purporting to cut them out of, I don't know, 20 acres of their land just because the, the line's drawn wrong. And they're trying to sell their property at the moment, or they were, I think it's off the market now. Well, don't they have to do the survey then? Yes. Yeah, so well, they might survey. have to do the survey, but we, we would have to agree with, with you know, where those lines are. And those things are potentially around the whole town forest. I mean, it's just kind of irresponsible for us to not know where our land is. And we've never known because of the weirdness of the way that old deeds used to be drawn up. Um, there is also an easement that gets us into the town property. It's, it's landlocked in a sense, but that's, that's a separate issue raising separate concerns. And it's not part of this survey. I'll send you, we'll, Paul and I will we'll send you information about this. Yeah, it'd be good to have a little information before the meeting so we're up to speed. Thank you. Any other questions for Larry? No? Okay. All right. Thank you. It's been fun. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. <laughs> Before we slide into reports. Yes. If we could solve the waste that. management. Yeah. The waste management piece. Yep. Yes. Go ahead, Ann. I just saw today um, that I believe is the same one that came out last year, right around the time we just had just really got elected. Um, but it is something that you can apply, I want to say, up to $15,000 um, to help with. Trash management that includes things like tire removal. So last year we spent fifteen hundred dollars to get rid of tires. Um, so we could apply for a grant. You know, something specifically, something where we could do it in a way that encourages people to bring their tires to us, not be throwing them over the hills or as happened after Green Up Day, um, there's some tires up on our mailbox, I need to come get them, you know, that, and be proactive about it and try to get rid of as many old tires as we could qualify for. Who would you propose would write this grant? I would write it. Really? Okay. I write grants. Cool. <laughs> it's not a problem. I'll do it. But just it's due on the 29th, so we need to like talk about it at our next meeting. So okay. I could do it between now and then. Just I wanted to make sure. Yeah. Um, my understanding was that the maximum for each per town was five thousand. It might be five thousand. Yeah. Okay. It's a lot of tires. So. That yeah. Is that? That's it. Did that? That's just for anything that's collected during Green Up Day. Which could include taxes. Is that it's right? not even green up day. Oh, it's, it's just, just in oh, general. It's just a separate like, grant. Gotcha. That, that's separate from the green up day. That we yeah, it's up. separate we from. Yeah, I just great. think with every green up day, I know my yeah. neighbors are literally always up and down Moscow Woods pulling tires up from like down steep yeah. embankments, and it'd be so nice if we could just they be like. always pick steep embankments. They do. I know. It's like bring your job here. Yeah. You could have up, you know, four tires, or I don't know, we could come up with something per household to make it equitable and try to minimize how much we have people putting their life and them at risk. I, I've written in my head <laughs> many times, you know, thank you for choosing the blue beer cans, but do you think instead of throwing them down the steepest bank you can find, mm -hmm. you could just put them on the side of the road? <laughs> right. Again, I'm just drop I'm really getting too old to be climbing up the steepest banks. Anyway, <sighs> okay. Know. All right. Ann, can Is you just tell me the name of this? Let me go put it up on the. Or you can shoot it to you in an email. What is it? Central Rock Solid Waste Management District. Thank you. I'm They're giving the grants? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They do. For uh, trash and recycling collection. They also don't want the trash to go over the embankment. Yeah. There, there we go. Okay, so. Sorry. You'll come to us next week, with a uh, next <clears throat> meeting with a proposal. Well, I can send it out to you. Please send it out. Yeah. Is there, um, is there a way to 
I mean, do we have to publicize it about tires? I just get concerned about like heavy usage and or or inequitable usage or abuse of, of it. And yeah. I wonder if like, if we get the grant and we keep it in our back pocket and we just say, you know, if you're thinking about throwing tires out of your car, maybe just bring them to the town garage. But I, you know, I, I, we had talked about it at length like, like last year when it was an issue and it's, I don't know, I still have a, a hard 15, I guess 15, $5,000 would go a long way. It's a lot of tires. Um, it's a lot of tires. I mean, we had many years piled up at the garage yeah, and I definitely would not like suggest anyone bring it to the town garage. Right. The guys will freak out. But if we were <laughs> well, to exactly. have like a, exactly. a, a tire amnesty day, you know, like right. per household, like per oh, car so. could bring and you know, uh -huh. say, oh, so and so, uh -huh. that guy brought that. And then if his wife comes down later, we'll be like, we already saw. Bill. <laughs> you know, I, like, but, I like tire amnesty. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes people feel like it's sure. you know it's expensive, and I know there's people that have like way more than that. But at least I don't know, because that's a big thing that gets chucked, and it's an expensive yeah. thing to get rid of. So okay, but yeah, we don't necessarily we can talk about how to put it out there if we get it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Thanks. we'll put that uh, on the next agenda. Thank you. Which brings us to reports, and um, Jamie just said that she forgot to report something about Curtis Pond, so why don't we start with that one? I did. So two or three-ish years ago, um, the Curtis Pond Association started working with somebody um, in the Natural Resources Conservation Service, which is part of ANR, uh, federal government folks. Um, and they basically where it came down was it was probably going to be a six to eight year process but if we got through the six to eight year process and they and we hadn't figured out another solution for the dam they would fund a big portion of it I think 70 percent um, but it was this, it'll be six, eight, ten years, we don't know, it's way down the road. And so we've always been keeping that in our back pocket as a like, everything else fails, this process is ongoing. So they were on step, you know, three of seven or something in the process. Um, and they just completed one step and I'm meeting with them tomorrow um, to start the next step. If they start the next step, which is the plan EA, which I forget what that stands for, um, they would need a signed agreement with the town um, and they would foot 100% of the expenses associated with the plan EA process, uh, but there would be a town role, which I would take in super coordinating some of the actual engineering work. Um, so a meeting with him tomorrow, I think what's gonna happen is we're gonna say, just wait a month or two and see where we are. Mm -hmm. Cause we're probably gonna halt that whole process. Mm -hmm. um, but if he says it's now or never, like if you, we've paused it long enough, we need to start this process. If we're gonna start this process, then at the next meeting, I'll have a draft of the agreement that um, we would have to sign to start that process. I have, I don't, I don't know. I haven't met with him in quite a long time, so I don't know what he's going to say. Um, but he may say, even though you're 90% sure it's happening this summer, let's just start this process. Um, in which case, I'll bring it to the next meeting. And we'll be able to stop it if we, did, if it turns out we don't need it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's um, fascinating. I know. <laughs> Shaking my head. How in the world? There's so many branches and threads. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> right. Tegan, you always have. I don't even know what to write. I mean, I'm so big, but. Jamie went down a rather. Wow. All right. Uh, Tegan, I guess, isn't available, so Kari. Um, so we are, you know, getting 
close to, in terms of roads, we're getting close to the end of mud season actually. And so we're into grading season and they were out today, they'll be out tomorrow. And then we've got the rest of the week is rain, so it won't be appropriate, but okay. that's, that's gonna be the big focus. Um, and uh, unfortunately this is Dana Hoopy's last week. And so we'll be losing him. Um, and then been watching the cash really closely and feeling really good about the fact that that Moscow Woods project was approved, not for the full federal amount, but um, a good portion of it. It'll basically offset the uh, school district tax bill when that comes, which should be any time now. So I think we're gonna be okay, but um, you know, we're still watching it pretty closely. Well, we had talked, you had talked about hiring somebody from East Montpelier to help with the grading. Is that likely to happen? Um, so, you know, that's still to be determined. There's um, one of the options that was discussed that sort of got confirmation as a, a approval from the team was to um, possibly, potentially hire, rehire uh, um, Bruce Please. Campbell, who expressed interest to you, Pam, right? And coming yes. back on a temporary grading, basis. A grading only. Mm -hmm. Grading only. Yeah. <laughs> that seemed that was received more favorably than hiring outside contractors to do the work. There was some concern from a union perspective about about that. I don't think it was a hard no, but I think they preferred to go this route. So I got confirmation on that. That I'm feeling okay about that today and. So I'll reach out to Bruce soon to do that because we're gonna, you know, the more um, help we have, the better. We're gonna basically touch every road. We've got two graders. It'd be nice if we can have yeah. them both calling. Yeah. yeah. And well, then two and a half two guys. Two. So that's yeah. still gonna be tight with the graders because you need those two and a half guys in most projects that we're yeah. working on. Okay. Both then you have all day. So yes, yeah, so that would be helpful. Yep. We're gonna help with the radio. Well, oh yes, we're gonna talk about all been in executive yep. session. Anything else? That's all I had. I have a question that just came into my head. The CAI maps, what's the process for deciding what goes into them? I remember we appointed you the liaison to them, you, but who decides what we actually put on the map? That's a fine question. I think we're starting with sort of the basic data, the parcel data, mm -hmm. and then I think it's sort of up to us, and you're really asking what's the process we're gonna to use to determine that. Yeah, I'm not sure we ever figured that out. Yeah, we, we, so we may need a work through. group, you know, yeah. obviously some folks from planning would be part of it, and maybe conservation as and well, and road. Yeah. But, but they have to go through you, so at least, People are, it's not going to be a free and, and Tegan's and also very it. interested in this project and might, and might be ultimately the, the long-term coordinator of it. Um, I, you know, I volunteered to help with this initial setup and getting them going. Okay. So we'll but, see. But, I, but the more we want to do with it, I think um, we really need to think about process. Okay. It, because as you know from the uh, presentation, it's as flexible as uh, you know, can do basically what we want if, if we can provide the data. So just by being the one who wanted to see the presentation the most, I missed it. Uh, uh, just can do a do better. <laughs> Stay out. Uh, uh, well, I was wondering if there uh, were some information that you could forward. Was, was there like onboarding information that we had received at all on its capabilities or? The proposal, you've seen that though. Yeah, I've seen the proposal. Yeah, I, you know, my sense is if you want to give Franco a call, he would, he's very enthusiastic about his product and, you know, wants to, us to be happy right. and didn't mind getting into the detail of it, at least when he was making his pitch to us. I, but I'd be surprised if he okay. didn't take your call and okay. engage yeah. with you. That sounds good. Right. Yeah. Fair enough, thanks. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's been really, he's been good so far. Okay. Thank you. Um, anything on the uh, status of the court case from Ann and Jordan? Mm -hmm. No? Okay. In that case, uh, I think executive session is up. So. I'm going to stand up. Yeah. So you're going to get for a five coffee. minute break for yeah. them to pack up? Yeah. We'll, we'll,